I'm starting a fresh series on advanced financial management. And as you know, my style is to always start with the end goal in mind. So I'm starting with this introduction to give you an overview of what the exam will look like. And we'll look at the overall syllabus, what you need to learn, and what is the best approach to his this paper very easily. As you know, Advanced Financial Management Paper, AFM, is just the advanced version of financial management. So definitely your knowledge of financial management paper will come very early here and uh, i will tell you if you need to do some revisions you will also see it as i advance in this series yeah i'm planning to complete this syllabus before people writing december exams this year 2025 and um, i believe if you follow this series closely you will be quite comfortable to pass your exams yeah and where I'm going to start from is the exam itself. So let's quickly look at the exam structure. Remember, this paper is always written on the first Friday of December. So take, for instance, for this 2025, the exam date will be 5th of December, yeah, 2025. That's your end goal, yeah. Remember that I always say to you, Whatever you want to do on 5th of December, whether you want to pass or you want to fail, that journey starts now. You don't pass on 5th of December or fail on 5th of December. Every day you study, every day you practice from now on, you are moving closer to, pass, closer to passing or closer to failing if you don't study. Right? This day is just a day to manifest everything you've been doing. So I advise you, as you started listening to this video, start practicing and you start studying for your exams. Don't wait. So the duration of the exam is usually going to be three hours paper. And this three hours paper will be tested in two sections. So you have section A and section B. Section A is just one question. However, this is an almighty question because it's actually going to be awarded 50 marks. And this 50 marks is actually divided into 40 that will be based on your technical knowledge. So 40 will be technical marks, just testing the knowledge of the syllabus. However, there will be 10 marks that will be awarded based on your professional skills. Yeah. And professional skills is just about how you're writing, not what you're writing. Technical marks is about what you're writing. But professional marks is about how are you writing it. can come from any part of the syllabus so you can't cherry pick to study any part of the syllabus can be tested here please take note yeah and it's also good i mentioned to you that this question one will always be required in a specific format the question will tell you the way they want you to answer your question. For example, the question might say you should prepare a report to shareholders or it might say prepare a report to director. Yeah. So if they ask you to do that, you must make sure that your answer follows that format that's been required. So that is section A of the exam. Section B of the exam will be two questions and each question will be 25 marks each yeah likewise the same way you have for section here yeah 
Section B questions will also be divided into 20 technical marks each and five professional marks. So this is technical and this is professional mark. And that can also be tested from any part of the syllabus. So invariably what you're seeing here is that you need to learn the whole syllabus because you can't cherry pick. Yeah. So in total, what we are saying now is that this exam is actually divided into 80% of technical marks and 20% of professional marks. So you, your knowledge about the content of the syllabus can only earn you maximum of 80 marks. So this is about what you know. But how you present it can earn you another 20%. So you cannot joke with professional marks. Yeah. That is the exam structure. Now let's look at the syllabus itself quickly. The syllabus is in seven sections. Seven sections. And these seven sections is divided into five sections those are the technical content that you have to learn there are two sections that is just about the professional skills that you need to know how to apply and the employability which is about the way you use computer open spreadsheets and attachment yeah which you've been practicing all along when you've been writing your papers. So, but the most important part of this is your professional skills because these professional skills will earn you 20% of your marks. Remember, it's not just about what you say. This is about how you say it, your presentation, your structure, your argument, Skepticism, communication, all of that is being tested. So, however, for this series, what I'm going to be teaching you mostly will be the technical part of the syllabus. I will find a section to talk about the professional content, the professional skills. Yeah, but it's extremely important we we'll finish this technical area first. So, that will be my focus in this series. So let's look at the syllabus and we'll summarize it quickly, just the way we'll always do it. It's good to have a broad view of everything, but we'll, later we'll start going into details bit by bit. So the old syllabus of AFM is actually looking at students knowing the roles of senior financial executive. So in this paper, you cannot see yourself as a finance manager. But rather, you should be seeing yourself as a senior financial executive or even as a consultant advising client, you know, providing solutions to problems. Don't, please, don't see yourself as a student. Position your mindset like you're coming to solve a problem. Yeah, just like consultants will do. And what are these roles that we are looking at? We'll be looking at roles such as meeting stakeholders need, which is your section A of the syllabus. We'll look at Investment appraiser, you can see, we've done this before in FM. However, this will be in advanced form. Yeah, so here we're not going to be using the same method fully, but we'll be looking at advanced techniques in an investment appraiser. So this is a build on on what you know when we looked at financial management. Likewise, this is section B of your syllabus. 
then we look at acquisition and merger yeah which is not too different from investment decision but slightly specific to how you acquire a business or merge to a business and that will be some detailed um ex uh, examination there so we'll go into more details of investment in that place and you'll see that this is just like alternative method of investment after that we move into corporate restructuring corporate restructuring or and reorganization so this part is section d and here what you learn under financing business finance under fm will come handy here as well so you see investment appraisal method you leverage here here you leverage financing here very important that's section d and section e is your risk management risk management that is section e yeah this is where we'll be looking so much into derivatives and i will tell you arguably this is probably the most difficult part of the syllabus the risk management yeah remember you've looked for money you've done investment you need to manage your risk to make sure that you're able to get the best from your investment because your plan would not always be your result but you want to minimize bad surprises as much as possible so you're going to learn how to use derivatives to manage your risk and um, it's good i am tell you that though the five sections might not be tested in a year or in a particular exams but there are two sections that 100 percent will always be tested and that is your section b and your section e so in as much as you think risk management is difficult it's not a part of your syllabus that you can leave aside it's not possible to pass this paper without scoring some points on risk management uh, but what i'll promise you for sure is that i will make it very very easy for you trust me yeah so it's nothing for you to be worried about i know a lot of students struggle a lot with this part so i promise i'm going to do justice to that for you right so section b section e will always be tested in your exam however that will not stop you from learning all the part of the syllabus yeah okay so that's it with the overall summary of the syllabus we're going to go into details of the syllabus in my subsequent videos but before i go i'll give you tips quickly for this paper yeah like i always do please follow this and your life will be much easier the first thing is you have to have a study plan it's not negotiable you need to plan how you want to cover the syllabus when you want to finish it if you are writing december exams you have to finish the syllabus by october ending yeah so that you use november for revision yeah so by november you should be doing revision just revision and what does that mean it means you're just solving questions and you're only going back to difficult areas that you struggle with and once you are when you are doing your study please know that you have to practice questions because that is when you learn a lot about your professional marks yeah don't solve questions on top of your head don't solve questions on rough paper or rough sheet get your excel and type your responses read it learn how to structure your responses write a report and all of that so please practice is extremely important yeah and once you are practicing be conscious to apply your professional skills right and likewise you have to read examiner's reports hear what the examiners are saying likewise te those technical articles and news yeah that shows you what is going on in the reality because that is what this exam is trying to test so listen to what examiners are saying about why people are failing mistakes people are making about some past questions in the exams it will also help you 
maybe when you are tired studying you can relax in bed and just read those articles and those off right and finally like i said earlier please see yourself as a consultant that will really help your mindset yeah not as a student don't see yourself like you're a student Look at yourself like you are solving problem as a consultant. You are advising a client on a problem. Yeah? So what it means that you're going to be applying what you know. So this paper is about application of knowledge. Yeah? And not you just regurgitating what you know, what you have memorized. No. That, you're not going to pass like that. You always have to apply your knowledge. So which means you don't memorize, but you have to understand. And that is what we'll be doing for the next two to three months. Okay? So that will be the overall summary. Next videos will be focusing on the syllabus. And we'll start with section A.